Track Wrestling here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, NWCA National Convention with Virginia coach Steve Garland. Well, you're coming up on what now? 14 years at Virginia so, this year? 14 coming up? Yeah, this is my 14th season. I, yeah, that's pretty good. You knew that. Yeah, it's 14 years at Virginia, six at Cornell, so my 20th season total. Division How division. has the program changed during your time there? What What do you think are the biggest landmark achievements that you've uh, had during your tenure? Wow, that's a good question. Well. The business card version of that is, you know, when I was in school, Coach Bernstein only had four scholarships, so he was really, really um, hamstrung. I mean, there was only so much he could do, right? And we had some good teams. My senior year, we were top 25, when I made the finals. Uh, Jim Harshaw and Matt Roth were All-Americans the year before me, so there were some good things. But that wasn't a sustainable model. Now we're fully funded. Now we have this beautiful $180 million uh, athletic complex on the way, so we're going to have one of the best facilities in the country in three years when that's finished. Um, we have total support and buy-in from the administration, which wasn't always the case. And, uh, and and I think we have a great culture internally in terms of our wrestling program. So the difference from when I was in school till now, when I was in school, kids wrestled during the season, and then you never saw them in the summer. It's not like that with us. I mean, it's a full-time. You, you're investing in Virginia wrestling when you come. You're, you're making a commitment to be the best you can possibly be, to max out in the gifts and talents that God's given you, uh, and, to, and to develop and sharpen those skills and to improve on those skills and get 1% better every single day. And to do that, you have to be doing something. So it's year-round. It's year-round for our program. I think that's made the biggest difference. In terms of results, there's been a million changes. I mean, when I got there, the two years prior to me getting there, they hadn't scored a single point at the national tournament in two years. Four years later, we won ACC's first championship in 33 years, and we're top 15 at the national tournament. So we turned things around really fast. Uh, and then after that, the bar gets raised, right? And then it was top 15 was great at the time, but now it's if we're not... You know, we want to get an NCAA team trophy short term and compete for a national title long term, so the expectations are a thousand times different than what they were. What will it take for Virginia to reach that level? So it's it's interesting. We were ta I was talking to Coach Papalizio and Gavin. Gavin, I used to work with at Virginia, and we were, we were saying how it's interesting that, you know, in NCAAs, if you have three studs, you're top 15, top 12. You get four or five studs to compete for a national championship. So it's recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. We need a lot more Jack Mueller's. We need Jay Aiello's, who's a guy that nobody knows about, but he's a total stud in our program, and uh, we think he's got a great chance to do do great things to anybody in our room. And we need we need more of those guys, though. Guys that are uh, borderline obsessed. Uh, borderline obsessed with the, I shouldn't even say borderline, obsessed with the process, enjoying the process and loving training and loving competing and being out there and just getting the most out of that uh, and, and being able to be committed year round. And, and when you do that, good things happen. What will you have in your new facility that you don't have right now? What, so, what will that look like? That's a great question. So the it's called the it's basically they're calling it the uh, the master plan of Virginia athletics. So it's going to be a, a student life center for athletics. I mean, it's going to be the wrestling room will be phenomenal on the bottom, locker room, coaches' offices. But connected to that, you're going to have uh, strength conditioning, sports nutrition, life skills, uh, academic advising, uh, career center, uh, computer lab. I mean, you name it, you're going to have it. Tutoring, mentoring, you're going to have everything, a one-stop shop for athletics in our building. Our guys are never going to have to leave. And then, oh, by the way, right across the street is a $150 million John Paul Jones Arena. That's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. That's where we're going to be competing now. Uh, so we're going to have everything in that triangle right there. It's, 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 a, it's a dream. I mean, it's, it's going to change the face of Virginia athletics forever, and we're already good. I mean, UVA Athletics, we, we're the best men's team in the country in terms of athletics last year uh, with those rankings. You know, the Director's Cup or Capital One Cup, whatever they call it, we were the number one men's sports team. We had, we had two national titles last year. Um, and we've had 20, 27 national titles or whatever it is in the history of the school team titles and umpteenth number 30-something individual titles. So we win at a high level without all that. Imagine what it's going to be like when we get those types of facilities. How much does that matter to recruits? You know what? It matters a ton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it matters a ton. Uh, I didn't realize how much it mattered until I started traveling. You know, we went to uh, Michigan's wrestling room years ago when they just built that brand new facility they had, and I thought, wow, right? Uh, Ohio State's room, what they've got. Cornell, when I was at Cornell, put it like this. How about this, for example? When I started at Cornell, my first two years there, we were just a mediocre team. We got the Friedman Center. Two years later, we were fourth in the country. So I think it matters. Yeah. We had the number one recruiting class in the country that I helped be a part of. So I'd say it's a pretty, pretty big deal. <laughs> Do you wish you were 25 years younger with what these Virginia athletes are going to have here in a few years? Well, I, I t it's funny you say that. Even my guys now, like Jax, he's going to wrestle this year and then be done, right? So he's a little jealous too. He wants that. And so, yeah, there's times where you get a little envious, a little bit, man, you guys don't even know how good you have it. 
We had nothing like this, nothing. You know how hard we've had to work to get to this point? But then the other side of me says, well, look, how about you talk to you guys about being grateful all the time. Why don't you be grateful for somebody else? Don't worry about yourself. Be grateful for them, what they get to enjoy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. What uh, do you appreciate about coaching Jack Mueller? Well, I mean, it, what's cool about Jack is he's wicked honest. Uh, he's extremely hard on himself. He's one of the few athletes I've ever coached that'll come look you in the eye and repent on something that he's done wrong to uh, attack his weaknesses and say, look, I'm, I'm really not great. Uh, this, this is an area for me. What are we going to do about it? Uh, for me, I mean, something as simple as off the mat, I had him come in and talk to me about something real personal, and I couldn't believe how honest he was about it. I, I, most athletes are full of baloney. You know, they, they actually, I joke, they play the character in the movie about themselves. You know, they're, they're, they're almost borderline schizophrenic. They're one person in front of mom and dad. They're another person in front of their girlfriend. They're another person in front of their boys in the locker room. Another person in front of their professor. Yes, sir. And no, sir. And then they're out, like, you know, Saturday night doing this. It's like, what, what kind of integrity do you have? Be the, same, be the same psycho in front of everybody. I'm the same crazy guy in front of my pastor in my church or I'm in front of you. If I walk down the street and talk to some random guy at a smoothie hut, I'm the same, same cat. Took me years to get to that point. Praise God I did. But dang it, it's like that's what I want for my guys. That's called integrity to me. Be the same character no matter who's in front of you. And that's who Jack I feel like Jack is that guy. I mean he at least at least from my experience with him. And so that he's really darn good at wrestling. And and because he loves it and he's a student of the sport, he studies film. He's nonstop. He's every Texas, did you see this? He shows a Russian film from, you know, some guy hitting something that I hadn't even seen yet, you know. So that makes it cool. And he and he's um he's a competitor. When he goes out on the mat, he wants all eyes on him and he wants to do the best he can possibly do. What went into pulling him out last year? Because that was the plan, right? We were gonna red shirt, that was the plan all along, get ready for you twenty threes, and then you come back from uh Bucharest. Yeah. And a month, I think, about a month later, you're you're putting him in your lineup again. Yeah. Uh, I, to me, I, I keep everyone asked me that. To be honest, it was pretty simple. Uh, when we were in Romania, it's funny because a lot of coaches on the trip were busting his chops. Man, you need to be wrestling. You need to be wrestling. And people even said to me, maybe even in confidence, hey, you know, if it were me, he'd be wrestling. And they're like, no, no, we're okay. And then we got back, and it was one of the things where the team desperately needed him. Uh, and it was one conversation. He came in, and the office was, Coach, I'm ready. He's like, I told you I was ready before. I'm ready now, whatever whatever we need. Just you you tell me what we're doing. And it was one question. He said, do you think I can win the national championship? And I said, yes. And that was it. We were off and running. So it wasn't very complex, actually. Play on again to go 25? Yes. OK. Uh, NCAA finals, you're going to go against uh, Spencer Lee in the finals yeah. against Spencer. Uh, you know, Jack has shown that he's really tough on top. He's pretty good on his feet. What is it going to take for him to climb one step higher? On the podium. Well, I mean, obviously, Spencer's really good. He's a world champ for a reason, two-time yep. national champ. But there's other great guys at the weight class, too. Sure. I think what we need to focus on more is, is Jack's attack areas and not necessarily the other guy. In other words, Jack's got some areas, I won't say on camera, that, that we need him to fix. And if he does that, we feel like he can beat anybody, whether it's Spencer Lee or somebody else. What do you get out of a weekend like this at the convention? It's different year to year. Uh, that's a good question, too, man. Th this year was... Um, I got to, I don't like being ignorant. I'm a pretty dumb person by nature, I think. I don't have, a, you know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'll tell you what, I, 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 at least I can know what's going on. At least I can be up to speed on our sport, what's going on in our sport. So that, I, you know, APR rates, getting caught up on all those stats, getting caught up on the new rules. Um, this RTC battle that's, that, that's brewing, it's going to bubble up to the surface. It's gonna get heavier. Getting up to speed on all that. What's everybody's opinions on that? How do I even think about it? You know, I've been working really hard to build our RTC, but what are the positives and negatives about this model and where it's going? And and so just kind of kind of being up on that. Uh, I also think one of the benefits is hearing the speakers. I got a couple great, great quotes. I mean, even the first opening speech was one of the lines was um, choose courage over comfort. And I always tell tell my guys, God's not concerned with your comfort. He's concerned with your conformity. Uh, and and I love that how he said that that way. Choose courage over comfort because sometimes conversations are really hard. They're not comfortable. Sometimes what we're doing in the room is, is not comfortable. Even me, I, I caught myself. I was talking to Heath Esslinger about this. I say, love the process, love the process. There's going to be times where you don't love it. There's going to be times where it's hard. You're going to do it anyway. I loved what he said just now, the man who just spoke. He said, look, with all this thing about oh, just be happy or never work a day in your life. It's like, no, sometimes work's work. Sometimes when I'm writing 250 thank you letters and my thumb's about to fall off to donors to thank them properly, that's not that fun to do sometimes. But you know what? They deserve it and it's the right thing to do. Or sometimes when I'm picking up tape balls at 6 o'clock at night because nobody else is going to do that, these are things, that's not fun. 
but it's something that needs to be done. So I like, I, it's just getting sort of uh, that reinforcement of the things you believe in are the right things when you see these ultra successful people. And then lastly, I think that, and this year I probably, you know, need to do a better job. This is connecting with old friends, you know, connecting with the relation, that relationship mm -hmm. piece that when you're so competitive during the season, you don't get to do that. And you get to be around people in a much calmer environment down here. As a leader of a program, you're called upon to inspire. That's part of that role. And, and uh, you have this energy too that I imagine inspires people. But where do you go for inspiration? Who are the people that you draw inspiration from? Wow, that's that you good. have. Well, um, so I, I'm, I'm really blessed. I have a, of a, a mentor named George Morris, who's the chaplain for the football team and for the basketball teams. He's a FCA director, Fellowship Christian Athletes Director in Charlottesville. And he's my mentor, so I get a lot of inspiration from him. Uh, I mean, I'll just call him sometimes on my way home from work when I'm just struggling. You know, those days when you're struggling, you're, maybe your gas meter's on empty, and man, you just need some help, you know? So he, he's a guy I have in my life. Um, the pastor of my church, pe people at my church, you know, I think the biggest source of inspiration, inspiration for me is God's Word, it's the Bible, you know, I, and, and I have to be, what I, I heard a pastor say once, bathing in that daily in order to get that inspiration. Because sometimes there's days where everyone says, oh, you're so high energy, Garland. There's days I don't want to get out of bed sometimes, right? There's, I have days like that just like anybody else, and then that gets me, get, gets me back where I need to be and right in the right perspective to be able to do the job I'm called to do. Let's back up to the RTC stuff. You mentioned that it's boiling, simmering percolating, whatever yeah. adjective you want to use, but uh, uh, where do you stand on it? Well, so the RGCs have been great for us in that I was telling you off camera, we've had a great off season. We've been able to train constantly, we went to five competitions, we were all over the country, it was awesome. You know, and, and so there's there's major benefits to them. You, um, you know, you can't have an organized practice that I can actually run with an RTC format. Now, well, you didn't. You can't do that with the club system. You can't do that with. Well, I shouldn't say you can't do it with clubs. You can't. There's a lot of rules that that, that you actually are, uh, can't do that. And now with the new model, you can do that. So that's been very positive. The negative though is, and this is the human nature, right? We have something good. We take it, we see how we can use it for our own good, we manipulate it, we twist it, we abuse it, and now we're over here. Now we're on the lines, outside the lines out here, and think bad things are happening. We're, there's the rumors about athletes being paid, current student athletes. There's rumors about tampering with hiring people's parents. There's um, you know, all these different things that happen that that's not what the intent of the, the model was for, right? And so the abuse problem, that's where then we get upset, right? And, and we're like, hey, we want everybody to be on an even playing field. That just makes sense. And, and anything, mm -hmm. you want to have to have some sort of ethical f foundation. Um, and so that's why we're bringing it back to saying, well, what can we do? Uh, should we change the model? Should we do away with it completely? Should we go back to the old local sports club days? What? Let's look at this because it has spiraled a little bit out of control, but there's way more. Uh, there's there's tons of positives, too, that people aren't talking about. You know, there's a lot of good things to these systems. I mean, look at all the results we've had and athletes and what they're doing and being able to take care of your guys. But the argument, and John Smith brought this up, is that, well, you can still have that with the club model. You can still do the same thing and take care of these athletes the same way. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. A few bullet points. What would you like to see fixed? What with the you, RTCs? Yeah. What would you like to see reined in? Well, that's the hard part. So I, I, I think I kind of I, I want to see more legislation. We have to have rules. We have to have boundaries. Human beings need guardrails. We have to say, you can't be paying people, man. The way it is now, the way the RTC system set, essentially it's a loophole with the NCAAs. The NCAA doesn't want to deal with it, so you can just do whatever you want. And say, well, RTC. It's RTC. You do whatever you want. RTC. I think it's a problem, right? Shoot, I feel like I do everything I can to try to do the right things and try to uh, stay within the framework of the rules in my sport, and I'm still tempted, right? I mean, I'm, I'm human. Well, well, we can, well, they say we can do it. Let's do it. I, I don't think anybody should be in that situation. Let's create those let's, let's legislation that says, no, you actually can't do that. <laughs> you know, let's do that maybe. So I'm, I'm kind of erring on that side. That, that's the bullet points of getting some, getting some backing from the NCO blade that says, here are A, B, C, and D you can and can't do. It's been so, or, well, I think you can make the argument it's been pretty beneficial to USA Wrestling. And For sure. What yeah. has happened in the age group levels. And also, I mean, we're seeing guys step into college ready to win, equipped to win yeah. right away like never before. Uh, what's the balance there in terms of what are we reign in here versus what may be helping the United States as a country? Well, that's that's exactly the question. Um, you know, one, one thing I didn't mention, you don't want RTC guys recruiting recruits. I mean, they're calling kids and yeah. they're allowed to. They're, they can call them about an RTC practice. They can call them about an RTC camp, but it's dangerous ground too, right? 
you've got this ultra, ultra super stud from this said university that's calling kids. Is it legal? Technically, yeah, I guess. Is it good? I don't think so. We have to take all these recruiting, we have to take a recruiting exam, we have to know what we're doing. We have, we're, we're under a set of guidelines. Well, then that person needs to be on a set of guidelines. How do you pull that off? I don't know. That's, that's kind of what we've been talking about. I can't so, imagine how much time you guys spend with compliance people. It's crazy. Going over stuff like this. Not what, just what even compliance, educating your own administration. Yeah, you, you have to be able to ex explain to them what we're even doing. The sit down I had to have with my head of fundraising, wait, Steve, you're gonna raise $120,000 a year for, for what now? Wait, what? Why is that money not going to our new wrestling room project? Why is that money not going to the endowment for the scholarships? Why is that money not going to your operational endowment? What are we talking about? You have to explain that. You wanna talk about difficult. <laughs> to somebody who doesn't know wrestling is what I'm saying. Now, people that know wrestling, there's been tons of positives. I mean, our program has definitely benefited from the RTC model. We've, uh, our, do our donors who support that RTC are 100% for it. And, and, you know, the Jack Mueller's, we want to multiply that. We want to get more. And so um, it's, it's interesting because there are the pros and the cons. And how, how you tighten it up, again, I don't have the, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. I really don't. Uh, you sat in on our rules meeting. What did you get out of that? What are, what are the main takeaways from a rules standpoint for you? I thought it was fine. I right thought it was fine. I thought it was good. I thought I, one cool thing is I I feel like they are addressing like the hands of the face. I don't I don't think it's perfect, but it's better. I mean, I you know they're trying to address things that are hot topics. I think that uh, I think that the one cool thing about this convention was the officials being here. Um, I thought that was great. Life's all about relationship, us being able to rub elbows with those guys in a non-stressful manner. And for them to see that we're not completely crazy and for us to see that they're not completely crazy, I think it's a great thing. I think uh, there's a lot of officials out that I've met in the last two days, even just handshakes. I can just tell, like, man, that's a good guy. I like that guy, you know? Um, and I think that's important for when we move forward in the battle this season that so we don't lose our minds, myself absolutely included in that. NCAA championships going up to Minneapolis next year, U.S. Bank Stadium, potential to... I would up, say, hopefully. yeah, I mean, probability to set an uh, attendance record up there. Uh, a bid cycle coming up after that. Where do you think you would like to see the NCAA championship go that they haven't already been? Give me one city that you think that they would thrive in, be good for wrestling. Atlanta. You know, I think... Um I think Georgia wrestling is, is coming up. I think that to be really cool, it's a huge place, huge airport, um, facilities up the wazoo. It's a really cool city. I could see that. Um, selfishly, uh, I'd like to see something maybe Baltimore, DC, something like that, you know, just because that's where we're at. Uh, you know, it'd be such an easy trip for me. But uh, I, I just, in terms of everybody being able to handle that, what a huge, it's one of the biggest airports in the world, right? Atlanta Airport, I think that would be, that would make sense logistically and I think facility-wise. How about your thoughts on having it in U.S. Bank Stadium? Oh, I'm excited. I think, you know, I've heard a lot of negatives because it's gonna be so big, but look, Minneapolis is cool as heck. I, I, I love that city. I've only been there once. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really cool. I love the Minnesota coaching staff. I love their facilities. I love everything I've seen on online and on pictures. It looks like it's going to be great. So I think it's going to be awesome. I think if people aren't coming, they're crazy, especially with the product that's been put out the last five years, right? Hey, awesome stuff, Steve. Anything else for us? No, thank you for what you guys do. Thanks. I just got my membership. I just went online and did it the other day for track wrestling. There you go. Get your gold membership. <laughs> I did. I did. I got my gold membership. <laughs> Thanks much. Appreciate yeah. it.